Hi, hi everybody. Welcome back to the Cloud Track. Please welcome Thomas Tafiri, who will talk to us about machine learning with Apache Hama. Thanks. Well, uh, this uh, talk uh, will give you a very brief introduction to the Apache Yama uh, project with a little bit of history also and some uh, examples of algorithms uh, for machine learning that uh, we inside the project have implemented and the work that is currently being done uh, on that topic. So just before we start a little a couple of words about myself. Yeah, I'm an uh, ASF uh, member and I commit to uh, some projects, uh, lately especially to Lucene and Solar, uh, Ashiyama, Lima, and, and Stumble, which more related to this uh, NLP information retrieval uh, area. I'm also a software engineer at the Adobe R&D, uh, working for the Basel team. Uh, I'm Either if you want to talk to me about uh, some of the projects or yeah, uh, the R&D activities at Adobe, feel free. So I think we can just get started. So what we are going to, to see is uh, what Apache Yama is <coughs> and uh, just before that what BSP, uh, it, which is a programming model, uh, is as well and why it could be a good idea to, to run uh, machine learning stuff on top of PSP and Apache Yama in that, in that case. Uh, we'll see some examples and also some benchmarks because yeah, you know, it's usually uh, very useful at least to have a rough comparison uh, between existing solutions or at least one or two uh, famous solutions. Okay. So uh, what Apache Yama is, is a, a bug synchronous parallel computing framework on top of HDFS for massive computing, uh, scientific computations. Uh, what uh, this means is that, uh, at least to me, when I just find out, found out the project uh, was a couple of years ago, was just it could be a good idea to, to use this when you have lots of uh, huge computations and you want to scale in parallel, which, yeah, is very generic, but uh, then we, we will see where HDFS is involved and what this BSP stuff means. Uh, it's a top-level project since May 2012, and let me spend a couple of words on, on this thing, because, yeah, I was uh, fir firstly involved in uh, Pashiyama as a mentor, and, yeah, I, I, I can say I'm just uh, a little bit proud because the, the project was uh, not having that much activity because it started as a, um, an incubating project with, uh, which was sponsored by the, the Lucene PMC. But uh, yeah, it was uh, running, uh, having cool things, but with uh, not a very huge community, not, yeah, you know, uh, advertisement or at least awareness between the developers. And so uh, me and some other folks in the project uh, spent a lot of effort and time in trying to yeah, enlarge the community and let the, the project grow. And right now we have uh, kind of six uh, most active committers, but the, the community is growing. So I think it's, yeah, it's good news and uh, something like uh, a nice success stories from the incubator point of view. Uh, the O60 release uh, should be out soon, which uh, means that it's supposed to be out in, yeah, you know, it's, it's uh, on the third release candidate, so the, the fourth should be out soon. And yeah, that's it for, yeah, very overview. So uh, what BSP is, uh, basically the idea is that um, a, pro a program uh, running on the BSP uh, parting is uh, composed by a sequence of super steps. Um, and very basically, what a super step is that is that it's composed by uh, uh, three uh, minor um, things. Uh, it's the local computation, uh, so something being done, elaboration, yeah. So something uh, uh, 
intensive from the CPU point of view, uh, a communication phase, and afterwards a uh, barrier synchronization. So where all the tasks that are running in parallel uh, synchronize and wait for one another uh, to, to reach out the, the next super step. So each super step is uh, like that. And uh, um, an algorithm is composed by uh, a sequence of super step which is executed by each task. So uh, we said that it's going to be uh, deployed for, for parallel computation, so we will have some uh, tasks running on parallel on different nodes or uh, just on a single laptop but with multiple cores. So they will be running in parallel and each superset will, will be like this. Computation, communication and synchronization. Uh, one thing to notice is that the communication just happens before the synchronization and then uh, the receiving on, of the messages that have been sent from, from tasks just is, trigger, is triggered uh, after the synchronization barrier has been hit by uh, every, uh, every task. <coughs> so uh, in this picture we, we can see that the second super step uh, just before everything else uh, all the tasks receive some messages for uh, the, uh, some algorithm that are needed for some algorithm from, from the other from the other tasks. So it's yeah you know it should be very uh, easy and in terms of programming models also for newcomers it shouldn't be that uh, hard to think uh, to an algorithm uh, in these means. Okay. So. Uh, why uh, PSP? Yeah, we, we, we have map reviews, which is cool and it's working and it's, uh, yeah, it can scale and lots of uh, things happen with, uh, with map reviews in terms of large scale operations. But uh, a couple of ideas would be that uh, the programming model is still simple. Or one could, could argue that map reviews is simple as well, which is true. But, well, at least for me, when I just didn't know, know uh, none of uh, both, so not knowing BSP and MapReduce, it, it, it sounded like uh, being, yeah, just more straightforward this BSP stuff, but maybe that's an opinion. Uh, but the, the very good and interesting thing is that this parting model, there are some papers uh, about it, uh, is very useful because it helps preserving data locality so that uh, all the overhead that is given from uh, by uh, map reviews um, uh, messages synchronization and uh, all that stuff is uh, reduced in this uh, in this approach and and therefore the performance is improved uh, and uh, more mo most importantly uh, it's well suited for iterative algorithms which is very important because uh, you know, m maybe uh, all of us, uh, when starting to, to think of, to a new algorithm or existing algorithms, we usually, yeah, at least have some iterations over, yeah, the input stuff. So, it, it, yeah, a lot of stuff is inherently uh, iterative. So, uh, let's see, uh, well, very briefly what the architecture is all about. We have... Uh, on the upper left, uh, BSP program. So someone wrote uh, an algorithm using this BSP paradigm. Uh, there is a BSP job client which sends the, this uh, job to the BSP master, which is uh, just some kind of uh, manager of the, all the jobs. And, and then there are the, uh, it, it just uh, spawns the group <coughs> server, which are uh, just kind of, uh, uh, abstraction for a single node, uh, and inside the node there are there or yeah, maybe one per each node, but also many on each node. There are the PSP peers, which are the actual tasks that compute the the work. So uh, this is very very basic, but that's that's more or less the, the architecture and how it works. And there is Zookeeper for managing. Uh, as always, some configurations, and uh, in this case also for the barrier synchronization. And yeah, that's it. Let's see a, a more uh, detailed stuff. So, and here is where HDFS uh, comes in. So the user submit a job uh, by the, the client, 
the uh, BSP master has some uh, uh, link to the uh, to a HDFS name node, which is just used for I/O. So you know, it's the, so the data is just on HDFS, uh, even for reading or for uh, writing. And there are group server which has uh, which, uh, which have uh, different BSP peers, which are the tasks that are currently uh, run, uh, which processes from the uh, machine point of view are uh, processes, uh, which are executed on some data node. Oh, okay, so let's uh, get through some features. Uh, as uh, you can imagine, Apache Yama is a BSP API. Uh, a very uh, useful in terms also of comparison with existing solution, it, it says uh, the IO API is compliant with the uh, uh, Hadoop MapReduce one. So we have yeah, uh, input formats, output formats, writables, and all that stuff that is used in Hadoop. Uh, there's also a graph API to just, yeah, you know, uh, implement something like page ranking algorithms uh, and the like. <coughs> there is job management and monitoring. Um, maybe useful to mention that uh, someone uh, used Apache Yama for, do for doing some kind of uh, network analysis on, the, on a very huge internet and monitoring the, 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 the traffic with this, with this approach. Uh, it has a checkpoint recovery, uh, like uh, I do. Uh, it can run on uh, locally, pseudo distributed, uh, fully distributed, just changing some configuration files. So your code is always the same. Uh, you can just use different message transfer uh, stuff, uh, but uh, it's not used very much uh, in terms of the default one is usually used. Uh, there is support for uh, MapReduce second generation Yarn. Uh, also, uh, important because we are in the cloud uh, track, it, it can run in Apache Weir. And yeah, that's just uh, a few features that I, I thought it, that could be interesting, but we will see yeah, some of them in more detail. So we said, uh, the BSP API. So uh, we have uh, an abstract class called BSP, which uh, everyone who want to implement some BSP program uh, has to extend. And so there are some generics just to say what kind of uh, key values we are going to read, what kind of key values we are going to write, and what kind of messaging the old tasks are going to uh, exchange to one another. Very yeah, simple and basic. And this is again for the for the API. Uh, the, the most important method is this PSP method, which takes a peer, which is the current peer, which is uh, uh, which is running. So the process which is running uh, in the in the current uh, computation, and via this peer we we can get all the reference to the all the existing peers. We can write things on HDFS, read things from HDFS and all that stuff. So it's the entry point for doing something with Apache Yama. And there are uh, um, a couple of methods, setup and cleanup, which are just called once, uh, just before setup, just before the, each uh, um, task is uh, started, and the cleanup afterwards. So it's, well, we have BSP class with the BSP method, which takes the, uh, the peer uh, parameter, and that's basically it. So it should be simple. Okay, so uh, just a very uh, quick introduction both to BSP and um, uh, Apache Yama in terms of uh, BSP API. Uh, but here it could, we're, we are talking about, well, we'll talk about machine learning and uh, the question is why would we uh, run uh, machine learning on top of BSP and particularly Yama? Uh, the, 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 the answer is usually that, uh, and it has some benchmarks to prove, uh, iterative algorithms are, uh, yeah, usually most of the machine learning algorithms are uh, inherently iterative. So 
uh, it may make sense from the performance point of view to have better performances to just uh, use some VSP par uh, stuff or paradigm model for that uh, instead of uh, MapReduce. Or at least uh, we can give it a try and see the performances and uh, uh, pros and cons. So what uh, Apache AMA uh, currently has, it, it's not that much, uh, I'd say, because it's something that started uh, not no, not long time ago. It's something uh, kind of new. So we started implementing uh, clustering, um, this recent gradient descent stuff, and also the collaborative filtering uh, is in place. Some of us uh, are, are working on it, but it's not yet committed. But we'll, well, we will see what the it's how it is implemented. Uh, just because I was saying it's important to have uh, some benchmark or some comparison, uh, I used Apache uh, Mahout uh, or some some of the Apache Mahout algorithms in order to yeah at least have some uh, rough comparison between uh, uh, our Hama machine learning algorithms and the Mahout ones in terms not of which project is better, but more or less to just understand uh, which one is better suited for some uh, algorithms or situations. Uh, so there is a kind of benchmarking architecture. Yeah, that's, there is an app that uh, me and my, uh, one of my old friends developed some time ago from, because we in Italy we have lots of uh, troubles with the real estate market. So we want to have some kind of uh, real estate market analysis tool just to understand, well, I could buy this house in this zone or something like that. But not, not important for this, but uh, uh, the important thing is that since we crawl data from uh, different data sources, we, we had uh, lots of uh, uh, data, uh, a huge data set, uh, kind of uh, 1.5 uh, million uh, estate listings, which, yeah, it's not uh, that huge, but it's still something to start a, a comparison a comparison so the, the architecture of the app has uh, solar and Lucene so uh, since Mahout already has um, some some code to create uh, the vectors or uh, at least some stuff that needs to be analyzed by the machine learning algorithms <coughs> Sorry. from the from a Lucene, extracting it from Lucene index, we use the Mahout facility to extract the data from the Lucene index, and then put put it in on HDFS, and then analyzing it with uh, Hama and Mahout, and see yeah which perform it better. So let's start with the easiest one: uh, collaborative filtering. So the idea is that yeah you know it's something like the uh, always uh, coming uh, stuff of suggesting on Twitter, for example, who you could be interested in, in, in following and all that stuff. So given some user preferences, uh, here is the example of movies. We want to find users that are near to some specific user, where near yeah, can have different meanings. So user can follow them, uh, see what they like and uh, for example, choose that I want to yeah see some movies as well. But that's just to introduce the the, the, um, the algorithm, not that we are analyzing movies. So uh, what the uh, BSP version of it could be? Yeah, we have um, two super steps which are uh, repeated. Uh, for uh, well, for the entire data set. So given a specific user, so for example, for myself, uh, I, I just uh, get through the super step one. So I read from uh, HDFS some row, uh, which says the, the, the user preferences. And with some distance measure, I will, I'm going to find how the, the, the user uh, that I just uh, got from HDFS is uh, distant or far or near from the specific user under yeah under 
uh, you, you specified in the algorithm, in this case myself. Um, since uh, Mahout creates some vectors from text, we, we just can use uh, vector distances. Uh, so there are some different algorithms to do that, but the, the main idea is that, is that it's uh, far simpler than doing something with text. So the, the vectors, yeah, there are some math to, to just calculate the distance between vectors. Uh, so once we found some score, so for example, user x is distant uh, 0.5 from me, uh, we just bro broadcast the measure output to the other peers, so the other tasks. So each task does this stuff with some uh, um, user and broadcast the output to the other peers. In the second super step, we just aggregate the, the measure outputs. <coughs> so uh, as we said, the, after the barrier synchronization, we just get the, uh, the messages that were sent from all the peers. So we, we receive the messages and we update the most relevant users. For, for, for example, I'm interested in kind of three use, the three most relevant users and each task just selects uh, the, most, the, the users that have the highest rank. There is a, the, the, the HAMA uh, Jira issue over there just uh, because you can track once it gets committed. Well, that's uh, to understand more or less how it works. Given user rating about movies, so we have uh, John who didn't see the first three films uh, but gave 9.5 to the fourth, 4.5 to fifth and, uh, and etc. And so we have all the preferences for all the users. And so uh, we asked for the two nearest user to Paula. And with this algorithm, we get Timothy and Tom. And we've, we've uh, done user recommendation because that, that could be, you can follow Timothy and Tom on Twitter, or we can extract uh, highly rated <coughs> movies from Timothy and Tom that Paula didn't see. So for example, uh, Paula didn't see the last two movies uh, while Timothy gave 6.5 uh, to some, some movie Paula didn't see, so Paula could be interested in that. And that is item recommendation. <coughs> so let's, uh, let's come uh, to, the, to the benchmarks. Uh, it's a very simple algorithm uh, uh, that could be also implemented without uh, parallel stuff, but just to introduce it, uh, just to introduce the uh, PSP stuff uh, for machine learning, I thought it was useful. Uh, it's still highly iterative, but uh, compared to uh, Apache Mahout, uh, it behaves better than some algorithm called ALSWR, uh, and behaves some kind of similarly to the recommender job and the ID similarity job, which are uh, two al other algorithms which do the same thing. In, uh, for an uh, item uh, recommendation in Mahout. So it's, yeah, it's something that uh, gives us uh, some good path to, to maybe some, some good path since we have a yeah, comparable situation. So we, we move to the, the second example, which is uh, k-means clustering. So uh, this is something like you want, you have uh, a bunch of data and something like documents, we, and we want to automatically group those documents in uh, homogeneous clusters, which are, we, we, we just uh, don't know uh, upfront which are the measure that give us uh, similarities, but just uh, given on, in, in this case, for example, um, uh, again, on vectors, uh, on our, uh, distant or <coughs> so uh, we'll see uh, in a moment but iteratively for each cluster so the k cluster example two clusters uh, we want to calculate the new cluster center and add the dot nearest to the new center to the cluster so that's a, a picture that I've taken from Google images uh, that's fairly easy to understand so we have this data set and we, we just calculate what are the centroids of uh, each cluster, and so we assign uh, the, the, nearest, uh, the nearest 
data in either side to some centroid and then to the to the cluster. So that's that the output of uh, of the algorithm. How are we going to do that with BSP? So again, we are doing uh, some iterations, and we have two main super steps that get uh, repeated for the whole data set. Uh, we, read, uh, we, we assign, uh, we read the vector splits. We have two phases, the assignment phases and the update phases, which is uh, good because it aligns very better to the uh, BSP concept of super step. So we have a super step for the assignment phase and a super step for the update phase. So in the, in the first one, we just calculate the center uh, and broadcast what we have calculated. In the second super step, we, we just aggregate the, the information, we just uh, uh, update uh, ag again all the, all the data, and replace the old centers with new centers and check for convergence. So in, in the first phase, we, we just add new, new vectors to some centers and then update the center. Uh, benchmarks. Uh, this is something that was run uh, outside of my benchmark uh, architecture. Uh, well, at least I've run that as well, but not with that huge data set, uh, which I think it's, it's not uh, on the HAMA wiki, so it's yeah, something that may be worth showing. Uh, and the, the, the outcome, outcome was, uh, on average, is faster than um, how implementation of the k-means. Uh, and still, uh, Mahout has lots of uh, different <coughs> algorithms for doing clustering, so I'm not saying that uh, Hama will beat, uh, beat, it's not a good uh, term, Mahout for the clustering stuff, but it still is, is good to, to give it a try for some specific task. For, for example, in this case, it went well. So, um, Finally, uh, the, I'd say the uh, less easy algorithm, uh, machine learning algorithm that we have in HAMA. Uh, it's an optimization algorithm with uh, is general purpose stuff. So uh, we, in a, yeah, in a very, very high level, we want to find some local or yeah, global minimum of some function. And it's used uh, yeah, widespread for doing different things, so solving linear or nonlinear system. But uh, for our interest in machine learning tasks for uh, regression, so that we just uh, understand the model from the data and, and draw some uh, kind of um, function that defines our, our model. Uh, it's used in the neur neural networks, so it's used in many, many places. So that's, that's the idea. Uh, we have that surface over there, which is the, uh, the, the, the function that we, we want to minimize. Uh, and given a starting point, we want to just reach the minimum uh, doing different iterations. Uh, the intuition is that we just calculate the der derivatives of each point uh, and just to, sh to, to choose where we are going next. But that's not... Uh, that important for us. The important thing is that well, this thing can be used, um, and we will see it in a moment, in different use cases for doing something that is less abstract math and it's uh, useful for, for us as users. Uh, so how are we going to do that in BSP? We have four, BA, four steps, four super steps. Uh, so we just calculate uh, in the first super step, uh, intu intuitively, we just say we have the data set uh, and we, we know that, for example, uh, we have some output for a given input in the data set and we just try to calculate, given our uh, algorithm parameters, how far we are from that, uh, given that input <coughs> from that output. So it's something like that. Um, so in the su second super step, we just aggregate this information that we calculated, and we check if we if we're just uh, at a good point. So back to this uh, picture over here, we just need to check if we have reached a minimum. 
Um, in the first super step, each task calculates and broadcasts portions of the derivatives. So it, we, we are just now, now trying to calculate where to go next in the surface. And in the fourth super step, we are aggregate and update the parameters so that we are going to, to do the, other, the calculation of, uh, of the function again. So just to bring it to the, yeah, something that's more near to a use case, uh, again, with the real estate market data set, we want to just estimate new house prices given known houses size, uh, geographic region, and prices, so that we can expect that the new houses, for example, for data set that uh, I have, uh, in, such re in some regions, on average, cost something. And we expect uh, some, some parameters that give, will give us the function to, to, to find the the expected uh, price. So it's very basic. Uh, we just choose that for each region, because at least in Italy and especially in Rome, that's where I live. If you live in some zone in the city, uh, yeah, houses cost too much, but way too much. Uh, if you live uh, a little more outside, it's not that costly. But it, so we, we just choose to create different things for different regions, and so we just say we have the, the one house is 80 square meters, and it costs 150k uh, euro, and we we do that with 1.3 uh, vectors, and so here is the output. So we can maybe uh, understand better what's uh, going to happen. So basically, this is uh, the data set. It's uh, just uh, used of, well, the, uh, fail less data because it was uh, impossible to understand otherwise. And th this is the, uh, the output, the, the violet line is the output of our algorithm. The, 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 the violet line uh, was just, just a line which represents uh, the, yeah, you know, the, the data set in some way so that we know uh, how much, uh, what, Going going further with well with the new house and we put that uh, the the house sites on the hex we uh, we will have the house prices on the uh, y and that that's the output and well it's fairly simplistic it's not something that uh, you you would like to put in production but it's something that is going to be yeah. Mm, it's useful at least to understand what it can be used for. Yeah, you, you just have some data set and you, with, with that piece of stuff, you can just try to create some uh, function that uh, applies to your data set and tries to represent it in a, in a good way in order to, to say that new, new input, have, you can say the, the, the output for new input uh, for, with using that, that model. So um, the, the, um, the algorithm has something called in the, in the second super step, we are going to check, uh, we, back to that, we check if the cost, which is the distance between the data set and our model. Uh, and so uh, it's, uh, it, it's always important to check that because uh, we may otherwise not, the algorithm may not converge. So we also, yeah, also just designed the, the output of the cost checking. And you can see that uh, this <coughs> tells us that the algorithm is converging to something that is uh, slowly, or not that slowly, but always more near to our, our data set along the iteration. So we have on the x-axis the iterations, and we have a high cost of our model. And uh, as long as the iterations go, uh, go on, we have a uh, fair less cost and so uh, hopefully a better model for our data. Uh, it, can use, yeah, it can be used also for fair uh, other, other things, as I said. Uh, in, in this example, it can be used for classification. So it, in this case, it's um, another, we, we just use a different function, but it's the, the same concept. Uh, and I used that because I wanted to, to find which, uh, 
which state listings are well proposed uh, by ag agencies. So someone who puts uh, one more uh, piece of cost uh, when you want to buy the house. And uh, just, I want to avoid the, those, uh, those estate listings. Uh, but obviously, when they put some announcement on the internet, on some yeah, you know, real estate website, they just don't say, hey, I'm an agency. You, so uh, you have to uh, get that from the text or for, from, from something different. Um, and we, we want to, uh, that's another yeah, way of, uh, that's another use case for this, for this classification stuff. Uh, so existing items are tagged uh, or not as belonging to the agency. So again, with Mahout stuff, we create vectors from items text. And here is a, a sample vector. So we have yeah, some, some things that it's more or less math. But uh, intuitively, what we want to do here is that uh, we have this data set, and we want to separate which, uh, which estate listings belong to agencies, and which estate links in, estate <coughs> don't, don't belong to agents, agencies. And so that when something new com comes in, we, we just can, uh, can say, or at least guess with some score, uh, if it belongs or not to an agency and decide or not if, yeah, make an offer or whatever. So, um, again, uh, back to the benchmarks. Uh, it's not, uh, I'd say it's not comparable uh, directly to Mahout stuff, uh, or in, in this case for the, the gradient descent, because uh, Mahout implementation use uh, slightly uh, different algorithms version of the gradient descent. They're called the stochastic gradient descent and the conjugate gradient descent, which are just better in order to uh, create our model. But in terms of performance, so the, the next step for us in Hama would be just try to implement those algorithms. But the, the cool thing is that we, we reached a, a, yeah, a good fit, fitting model, uh, even with the yeah, worst algorithm, um, with almost the same performances, which I think is a good, is a good news. So uh, wrapping up, uh, even if the machine learning module is still young and it's a work in progress more or less, uh, and tools like Mahout have better coverage, so Mahout is a wonderful library as uh, huge <coughs> stuff, wonderful stuff, uh, but I, I think it, it would be nice sometimes to give uh, Hama uh, a try for certain highly iterative use cases, because yeah, at least for my experience and also from the other committed uh, experience, it, it has interesting benchmarks. So that's it. Any questions? Ah, uh, I can't hear you. Is there a vector metric implementation inside Hama? No, it's it's something like we, we did in uh, Hama as well. It's but it's something that should be yeah made compatible uh, to some extent in the near future. Well, it's it, it was something that uh, we we discussed to do to just use that or at least do something that is. Uh, at least adaptable to, the, to that, uh, but still, it's not yet. So it's something that, yeah, we are looking forward to that. Well, um, just one thing: we had um, a Google Summer of Code project running the vector matrix implementation uh, multiplication, uh, and it's it was a good uh, a good project, and it's going to be yeah committed uh, sometime soon. So it may you may. Get it a look. So, uh, what are your plans uh, around your and uh, So, it looks like you're implementing your own uh, distribution schedule and coordination. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, can you talk about your roadmap? Well, actually, um, 
we talked about the roadmap uh, fairly uh, a couple of well, three or four days ago. But honestly, I can't remember every item. Uh, but I think there was uh, we are working on the fault tolerance stuff uh, because it's very important. Um, there is some plan of yeah, other stuff with regard to machine learning and still yarn because well, uh, it was something that uh, uh, has been done, uh, I think it was a couple of months ago or maybe even before, but it's, it's not something that has uh, huge use cases which are, we are working on. So it's something that is there and yeah, it's uh, something that we want to support, but still we, we didn't make a decision about what we are going to yeah, to do with it. <coughs> no, no, no. It's uh, it's just using the RPC uh, from a loop for for that. It's not not very. Good. was about, uh, sorry I didn't repeat the, the other questions, about the, the um, uh, researchers on machine learning discourage uh, implementing new, new uh, algorithms using iterative versions, but ra rather using vectorized versions. Yeah, uh, my plan was also uh, to do uh, for this presentation some kind of, um, uh, the, the same algorithm using the normal equation algorithm which is used for, uh, which is just matrix multiplication and inversion based algorithm for doing machine learning. Uh, and it's something that uh, has been done, uh, the, the matrix multiplication stuff has been done um, in Hama in the previous version, but was not ported to the uh, latest version because it, it has some problems. So it's something that I think it will, will work on in the future. So I would say that, yeah, as I was saying, it's not something that it's okay for everyone, but uh, for, for every algorithm, but I'd say it can be okay for those algorithms that are not iterative because it, you can use uh, the matrix vector stuff that's uh, going to be in Hama as well. Okay, thanks. <laughs>